experience, ever experienced BPPV and you've treated it, but you still kind of have this lingering sense of dizziness or uneasiness or unsteadiness afterwards, that's what we're going to go into today. It's called residual dizziness. And what we're going to go over is what it, breaking down what it is, why it happens, who's at risk, and what the latest research says for recovery or suggests for recovery. So first, let's talk about BPPV itself, what it is. Um, BPPV are these little crystals that get displaced in the inner ear system. And, you know, we're not always sure why it happens, but we do know some risk factors. But how you know that you have BPPV is one, you have dizziness that lasts less than a minute, and it's typically described as a spinning sensation. Uh, although, you know, people can describe it many different ways. Two, um, you're going to have it with positional changes. So rolling over, bending forward, laying down, looking up is going to trigger the symptoms to come on. And what's happening is if you can look in this little, little model here, is that let's say you lay down or you roll over, you get these little crystals to move in the canal. They're supposed to sit in the utricle in, these, in the central chamber there. And whenever they move, they cause dizziness and sending abnormal signals to the brain. And uh, once it stops and settles, that's when your dizziness stops. And so um, then you sit up again, they move again, and you get dizzy again. Um, now, this, the nice thing is that what we do with, with treating BPPV is we move those little crystals around the canal back to where they're supposed to go. And, you know, it's a very mechanical issue. We're using gravity to assist us in guiding those little crystals around the canal. Um, and so oftentimes it can be fixed in, um, usually a lot of times with the first maneuver, sometimes they're, it's a little bit stubborn and it takes a couple more. Um, but, you know, typically it's, it's pretty much an easy fix. Um, now, uh, oh, and I'll introduce myself. I'm Kevin. I'm the, I'm a vestibular physical therapist, the vertigo recovery doctor. Um, now if you're not sure what's causing your dizziness, you can grab my, uh, free PDF, um, on the five most common causes of dizziness and how to recover from them below the link. Or if you're trying to fix your, your BPPV, you can check out my course, um, down below as well. That'll guide you through. Um, how to test and treat for it, and what you need to do after it. And we'll kind of get into that here too. Um, so, you know, that good news is that those little crystals can be effectively repositioned pretty easily. Um, just using gravity, put them back where they're supposed to go. Um, but let's talk about this residual dizziness that a lot of people experience. Now, often how you know you're, you're experiencing this residual dizziness is that the diz after you've treated BPPV, maybe you're getting symptoms with laying down or rolling over, but they're not quite the same as they used to be. Um, they're, they're a little bit different than it was before. A lot of times people describe those little crystals causing a spinning sensation. Um, this residual dizziness is more of like a wooziness or lightheaded, feeling a little bit off or disoriented, uh, maybe some fogginess. Um, and it, it, that's how you can know whether you're still kind of dealing with those little crystals or you have this kind of residual dizziness issue is the quality of the symptoms have changed. So it's no longer the spinning. It's more of this kind of, um, you know, feeling a little bit off. And I'd have to say, you know, the, the research said from, a, you know, 29 to 76% of people who are treated for BPPV experience this residual dizziness afterward. That statistic is kind of meaningless to me because it's such a wide range. But, um, you know, half, maybe more experience this kind of wooziness after being treated for BPPV, uh, at least in my experience. Um, and it can last... Most people, I'd say it lasts the rest of the day. So if I treat them, um, you know, at noon, maybe they just kind of feel off the rest of the day and the next morning, they feel great. I do have a good amount of people where it lasts a couple days or even maybe a week. Um, some of the studies have shown that it can even last a couple weeks or if it was, if they're sensitive enough or some kind of, um, you know, disruption to their vestibular system caused some kind of chronic issue could even last months. But most people, it's going to last the rest of the day, 
a couple of days, maybe a week, um, but it'll eventually resolve. So why does it happen? Um, now, there's a couple theories from this, and we'll go over them. The first being a persistence of those little um, crystals still being displaced. Maybe there's not enough of them to cause enough of a drag to trigger the spinning sensation and the eye movement, what we call them nystagmus. But maybe there's just enough just to feel a little bit off when you're rolling over or bending forward. Um, in that case, maybe doing the maneuver again might help. If you try doing the maneuver again and then it's gone, um, you'd probably know that that was what the problem was. There's still a little bit of those little crystals loose. But um, that's probably not going to be the case for everybody, that there's still little crystals displaced. We kind of call, call this a subclinical BPPV. You don't see the nice stagnants, you don't see those eyes moving, um, but you know, it's still positionally related and it's usually related to one side. Uh, you can kind of guess, well, okay, well maybe we do the maneuver one more time. Um, another reason might be that the autoliths or the organs in the vestibular system, so those utric utricle, saccule, have some kind of dysfunction that was already there or the dysfunction occurred when those little crystals got displaced. Um, you know, you can test this with uh, the OVEMP testing or CVEMP testing. We won't get into that now, but um, a absence or of, of a response with the OVEMP testing has predicted the development of this kind of residual dizziness. Uh, but not everybody's going to get that. You'd have to go through an ENT and, um, you know, those are long waits all the time. Um, the most common reason, I think, for why people get this residual dizziness is what we call about central adaptation. So the brain uh, gets used to having those little crystals displaced. It's trying to adapt to make sense of the world with them displaced. And once you reposition those little crystals, now it has to adapt back to normal. And it takes a little bit of time to do that. So you can imagine if you're kind of, you know, you're riding a bike and it's it's always pulling to the left, so you're overcorrecting to the right, and then you take it in and you get it fixed. And, um, you know, now it's riding straight, but you're kind of used to still overcorrecting to the right. Um, now, so you, you can see how the brain may be you know, just take a little bit of time or a little bit delayed in trying to um, gather all this information, all the sensory information that it's getting um, to make sense of the world around you. Um, and that's probably the most common reason, I think, for why people experience this residual dizziness. Um, but there are a couple other theories. Um, one could be maybe you have more than one vestibular disorder going on. So maybe you have BPPV along with, um, you know, migraine or Meniere's or vestibular neuritis, and that's causing some of these residual dizziness or cervicogenic dizziness, and that's kind of causing some of the residual dizziness as well. Um, Maybe there's an autonomic dysfunction. You have that fight or flight system or the rest and relax system. And so maybe there's a dysfunction between those that is causing um, you to have this chronic, pers chronic persistent dizziness. Um, anxiety can also be a big factor in residual dizziness. So anxiety, depression, and mental stress are frequently correlated with residual dizziness. And um, especially if there's a really intense episode of BPPV, it can be kind of scary when it's unpredictable and stressful when it's that, that severe. Um, and that kind of, they, they found on the, there's a dizziness handicap inventory. It's a survey that's often given to um, people who are experiencing dizziness. And there's a subcategory if people scar scored high on that emotional um, aspect of the dizziness, they're more likely to, to develop residual dizziness after getting treated for the BPPV. Um, so <clears throat> just knowing that um, you know, this is something that you can correct, it's temporary, you can fix it, I'm hoping it's going to help you um, get through it. Um, as you age, there's probably a, an increased risk of developing dizziness after BPPV. Um, and you know there could be more factors. But those are probably some of the most common ones. So identifying who's at risk. If you have any presence of anxiety, if you score, I have a higher DHI score. Then this probably only means much to somebody who's you know a clinician, probably giving that um, that test. Um, but 
kind of, it, you'll notice that if you're high on that anxiety or the emotional aspect of, of your symptoms, so worried about it, you may be more likely to develop residual dizziness. Um, also, if you had abnormal balance testing, so if your balance was off before getting treated for BPPV, um, you may be more likely to develop um, uh, residual dizziness. Um, older age, if you waited a long time before getting treated for BPPV and you've had that, those little crystals displaced for a long time. Unfortunately, um, females had a higher risk of developing it. We still love you though. And um, if you've had previous episodes of BPPV. Um, so those are some of the risk factors of developing uh, residual dizziness after you're treated. All right, so what can you do for it? So the management and treatment options, um, just especially if you're anxious about it, um, knowing that the residual dizziness is gonna go away. And oftentimes it's gonna go away with movement. So especially if it's the brain just kind of getting back to normal, the more you do, um, the better off you're gonna feel. So the brain just has to get used to repeating those movements and knowing that it's okay to do it without getting dizzy. Um, and, P and studies found that people who resumed uh, their normal daily activities, whether it was playing sports, wi walking, cycling, housework, after getting treated for BPPV, had, were significantly less likely to develop residual dizziness um, and their brains are adapting back to normal faster. Um, vestibular rehab is going to really help with this, doing uh, balance exercises, vestibular exercises to help ad you know, drive that brain adaptation. Um, and you, know, you could look at some of the medications, but there is not great evidence um, for beta histines. It's, it's kind of mixed um, on whether or not that's effective. Um, poly polyphenols, um, you know, they might influence it, but more research is needed. And vestibular suppressants like uh, dimenhydrinate and uh, meclizine, uh, you, you want to avoid those because those are going to prevent the brain uh, from adapting back to normal. So if you really need it to function, um, you know, they may be helpful in you getting through your day, but it is going to suppress your brain's ability to adapt back to normal. And that's kind of the opposite of what we want. We want your brain to adapt and we want you to be experiencing um, this dizziness. Um, so the big key takeaways here is that residual dizziness is common, but it's not the same kind of dizziness as what's caused from BPPV. And it usually feels like an unsteadiness rather than some than spinning. And it's going to be temporary. It's going to go away. Um, you know, most people recover within days, um, maybe a week. Um, if you have high anxiety and balance, and balance issues before getting BPPV treated, um, you may be at high risk for developing it. So that's something to keep in mind and something to address. Um, stay active because the more movement you have, the more your brain is going to adapt. It's going to drive that adaptation back to normal. So don't be afraid of movement because what makes you dizzy in this instance is going to help you get better. Um, the more you, you just pace it appropriately, the more you move, the more your brain's going to say, oh, it's okay to do this uh, without getting dizzy. But it's important to do that when you're not in an anxious state or a heightened you know, um, fight or flight state. Uh, consider doing vestibular rehab to get back to normal um, and address any other underlying health issues that could be risk factors like vascular conditions, um, you know, the anxiety we talked about. Uh, look at your vitamin D levels. That's a risk factor for developing BPPV. Um, and as always, um, you know, consult your doctor if you have any concerns. I hope this video is helpful. Leave a comment in the in the um, down below if there's something that's been helpful for you after treating BPPV to stave off this residual dizziness um, or get through it a little bit faster. Hope the um, thanks for watching and uh, till next time.